Hey, MTS collectors. I'm excited to share with you a new video that showcases our SMTS Sky Classics line of handmade, hand-finished aircraft that are made in the UK. We're gonna take you to England and share with you our trip to walk through the facilities and show you how these are made. And we're also gonna walk through the process of creating a new Sky Classics aircraft and the design, the casting, and the finished product. Enjoy the video. Hey guys, so we are at SMTS in Hastings, England, and I'm about to show you the shop here and how they make models, so come with me. At the start of the process of creating a new model, whether we've decided what, we're going to, what we want to introduce ourselves or the customer has asked us for, in this case it was Isaiah with the B45, um, we create this in, as a 3D image, uh, which Chris here does. Um, he'll go through the basics of what, uh, what he has to go through. It's quite a long process. Uh, yeah, so basically um, we get asked to design something and we get information. Uh, again, like here as well, we can use this information uh, for detailed parts, undercarriage, etc. for the sake of the fuselage. Sometimes I use a plan if I can find a plan online. And basically I'll start off usually by drawing the fuselage, this piece here, um, which I can isolate. So you can see that's generally how I start. So I'll start drawing the fuselage and then add the wings to it as well. And then the engine nacelles as well, depending on how we want to cast, if you're casting it with one whole piece. Sometimes if it's a bigger aircraft, there'll be separate wings and maybe separate engines as well. But then I'll draw, like on this one, we've got the two different versions. We've got the Bombardier's nose or the Recon nose. So we can change and use either. And when we come to cast it, we've got either on, so we can choose. It's also the same with the back as well. They have different tail sections as well. So they can just be placed in, like so. And you know, obviously you get an idea they fit. Nine in three, do they actually fit? And also separate tail planes and not tail planes bigger on the stabilizers at the back um, and how long did that take you to do and it takes me depending on the difficulty of the aircraft maybe a week um, sometimes shorter sometimes longer but this one i think took me about a week to draw around about that once chris has finished designing the model it then has to be 3d printed that we don't produce many components directly from the 3D printer for production. It's just the original pattern. So it's just a process that, go, that we go through. Uh, and Chris has on his screen here the build that he then sends to the 3D printer. Chris. Yeah, so basically I take all the uh, files that I drew, uh, as you saw in the previous video, uh, when I'm designing it, and I save them all off of STLs, which are printable files. And we upload it onto Preform, which is uh, Formlab software for build, putting a build together. And as you can see, I orientate these parts in a certain way to try and alleviate as much scaffolding as possible, but get an accurate uh, representation of the parts as they build off. So we've got uh, main fuselage, got the uh, under tray for the uh, fuselage so we can cut out some of the metal when it casts. We've got uh, undercarriage, front of the carriage, rear undercarriage undercarriage doors, a different tail section, different tail sections, different nose sections. Um, and if we come around the other side, we've got the uh, fuel tanks, wingtip fuel tanks, and the vertical stabilizers over here. So and if these, these all print off and I mark underneath for certain panels so no people know where they go. So you can see that as well. And then from there, if we upload that and it comes to our machine that was uploaded to the machine on here or the small machine here depending on the size of the air uh, the parts we're doing and uh, this is the build platform this is a tray for the resin and underneath is a cartridge where there's two lasers uh, so basically when i shut this down it comes up and loads up on the screen on here there'll be a build on here i can uh, just pick up anything here so there'll be a build come up and i'll ask it to print the platform drops into the resin, and as the laser comes across, it pushes the, the film 
where the resins sit in the tray up and it draws uh, a very thin layer of uh, 0.05 millimetres uh, each time and every time it comes and then once it's done that it lifts back up comes back down again but leaves that 0.05 uh, millimetre layer again to draw the next layer in and as it does it's building out of the resin upside down so each time it comes down it's drawing a 0.05 millimetre um, uh, layer each time until we get the part comes out finished on the build platform upside down and then it's washed in alcohol and finished ready for moulding. So we gave how long was that process? The process can take well, anything from 30 minutes to 28 hours, 30 hours, depending on the size of the build and how many parts are on there. So yeah, but it's pretty accurate and uh, the parts come up finished out very well. Okay, so we get the information uh, about the particular aircraft, this one being a B-45, which was um, a drone at the time. So we're getting all this information to, to how we want the, how the scheme looks. So we draw the decals on coral draw on here, as you can see. So we take this information, we basically draw the decals out and fit them after we print some on vinyl to check the fit. So see they test and will look all right. Make any small adjustments, take them back off. Um, we've got a three piece cockpit window here. So we've got one each side and the front the cockpit and on the bomb bay as a bomber's uh, window so it'd be do left and right so it's not one complete piece because it's difficult to do a compound curve decal to fit it and then it's drawn on the screen like this and finalized and once that's done it's uh, printed off on here on our Roland printer on decal paper and then they put on the final product um, this is centrifugal casting process, uh, goes back to just after the Second World War. Uh, it's something that uh, the co-founder of SMTS, John Allen, who's now retired, developed uh, from a very simple process into uh, a simple mould making process into quite a complicated one. And this is the mould for the B45, and Stuart here will show you how, uh, how, how the model is cast. The machine we use which are made in the good old US of A. This machine has, is basically a clamp. It's a clamping system to hold the two halves of the mould together and then spin it. With this model, we need to spin it at the lowest, lowest speed the machine will go. This particular machine is about 400 RPM. We then pour metal into the mould. The metal is heated in this electric furnace, um, which has this shroud around it to take any fumes away. The metal is basically tin and lead with some other metals in it. Uh, and Stuart will show you how it's done. So we put the mould together. Slip it into the machine, piece on the top. As it, as it shuts the lid, it automatically clamps, and spins, takes a ladle full of metal, Pour it straight down the hole and into the mould. A couple of minutes later, that should be another B45. Right, one minute 40 seconds later, off with the lid, out with the mould. And there we are. Now that's hot at this stage, but it's solid. Stuart will now take all the parts out of the mould. We cover the plugs. These plugs are made separately so that we can get we can cast holes in the in the in the model without ragging the mould and therefore having loads of flash and unwanted metal to uh, clean out of the casting. Okay, so once we've cast all these parts. These are taken off here. Usually we put these in a pot to use them later. And then all this centre core can just go straight back in the melting pot, melted down and used again. There is virtually no wastage. The next stage in the production of this particular aircraft is we don't cast these solid, 
because they weigh too much. And um, on a tricycle undercarriage aeroplane, they do that. So we have to hollow them out and then put a weight in the nose so that the model sits on its nose. And this has been a particular problem with the B-45. Then we have to close up the cavities. In this case, we have three panels that go on underneath, which are then soldered in place, like this one here. The tail planes are soldered on. And then it's all rubbed down, a little bit of filler, and blended in. Then it goes to the paint shop before we have the completed model.